Hey guys, it's Coded Steel, and welcome to another processing tutorial. So, first of all, a couple quick notes, guys. Uh, I've launched my own website. As of right now, it's not extremely sophisticated, so the navigation and whatever else, nothing really special or whatever else. But here, if you click on ENG One Source, like it shows, you can go ahead and navigate through pages by clicking on the buttons provided. I don't really have too much on this page yet, or in this page yet. This section has not been started, as I mentioned. And I have my software programming TAM, which has all my processing and C programming tutorials that I've done so far. So if you guys get some time or you're trying to you know, revisit past tutorials and you need a simple way to do it, it's just a simple way to get to my website. It's really easy. You just go to my about section and my channel page and just click ENG One Source, which is my website right there. I will be getting updated, guys. So if the architecture of it does change at some point, don't be surprised. That was intended. So, anyways, that's not what's important. What's important is that we learn some processing programming. So, what I want to cover today is how you can use a mouse press in your code how you can take user feedback from a mouse and and do stuff with it so how do we do stuff like that that seems like that might be a rather complicated task right i mean you know you've seen i'm sure you've you computer developers or whatever else or if you've written in any other programming languages in the past anybody who's done any type of mouse control programs in the past with like C or C++ or even Java, you would probably realize that there's actually a little bit of work to doing something like that. So how do you, how do you, do, how do you do this in processing? Is it just, is it going to require just as much work or maybe it's going to be a little easier? Well, I can tell you guys, you're going to like this a lot better. So what we do actually is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to type my void setup real quick. If for no other reason, just to set my size of the window to 200 by 200, just cause guys, that's, you know, a pretty good size, I think for a window. And that's usually the standard size that I use. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to type something, a, a new function. It's actually declared for you. It's called void if I could type it correctly, mouse pressed. So what this function or this method actually does is it's a specific, this, this, every time a mouse is clicked, whether any of the mouse buttons are clicked, the left, the center, or the right button is clicked, it will this function will be called automatically. So this is a special type of function. You actually don't need to call it in any other function. Like other functions in the past guys, you would see me do something like this. Maybe I would have something void L if I called it a func for uh, L a function or something, okay? And then later on, you would have to see me do something like this. L, you know, dot something. Any of you who have seen programming languages would would see this. I don't know. I, I really haven't covered this in processing yet, but you for mouse pressed, this doesn't work this way. You don't have to call the function. It calls itself when the mouse is pressed. So that's actually pretty handy because when this this function, and the unique thing about this function is, you guys might be asking yourself, does it call this function multiple times? Like if I hold the mouse down, will continuously reiterate this function. The answer is no. It will call the function one time every time the mouse button's pressed. So if I clicked release, clicked release, clicked release, clicked release, every click and release, every click is a mouse press, every release resets this function so it can be called again. So if I clicked it down again, then it would activate. So let me show you guys an example of this. What we're gonna do is we're just going to do a simple print statement inside of this. And I'm going to show you guys what this is capable of doing here. We're just going to do a simple little print statement. Print hello world. I think I discussed the print ln statement in a previous tutorial. If not, it's a very simple statement to understand. It just prints something down here in the council. So just uh, follow along with all of this. And then what we've got to do is we've got to run this and when we click inside of the window, 
we should get text to appear at the bottom saying hello world. Okay guys, we didn't get that to happen. Reason why I did that on purpose. Don't believe me? Well, the reason why is this. You need this void draw and even if it's empty it still needs to exist because what happens is processing executes everything from within the draw function it executes the setup function first and once the setup function is executed if there's no other code that is uh, it, it will execute all the other code first or all the other it will execute setup first sorry and then it will execute all other code and we'll see and the program will quit automatically so in order to loop it so it doesn't quit, we need this draw. So basically this is what happens, guys. If I take draw out, setup is called, and then the program quits. It doesn't matter whether this function's here or not. If the mouse button's not pressed, you know, right away, like as soon as the program begins, then this function will never get called. So in order to make it to where it can get called, you need to have an infinite loop where it's just constantly pulling the mouse button. Now this code will work, guys, and I'll show you exactly what I meant there. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Just remember that anytime you're calling any specific function that will call itself, there's also another set of functions called key pressed, mouse release, mouse dragged, all these different other functions that will, they need to be called with, draw needs to be present in order for them to be called. So enough of that. We haven't really done anything interesting in this video, so I kind of want to do something a little more sophisticated. Um, another quick thing to mention, anybody who's done any form of Java programming would realize something. This function usually gets split into two different, or this, this method usually gets split into two different types of methods. And you'll have something called an action listener and then an event handler. This thing serves as an action listener and an event handler all in and of itself. It listens, this is basically the listen for the action. When the action occurs, it handles the event. What are we going to do? We're going to do this. This is all done in almost like no lines of code at all. In Java, this would be like 15, 20 lines of code right here just to get this set up. But in processing, boom, void mouse pressed, print when stuff gets pressed, and then just make sure it draws continuously looping. And that's all I've got to do, guys. So it's, it's really that simple. And believe it or not, this adds a lot more flexibility to a program. So let's do something a little cooler, because this has been kind of boring, at least for me. Hopefully it was it is for you guys too, because this is almost pointless. Anyways, um what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to use if loops. So you guys should remember if loops from like two or three tutorials ago or something like that. And then we're going to type is just follow along with what I say. If mouse button, mouse button is a keyword, guys. It's reserved by the processing compiler. It is actually a variable reserved by the processing compiler. And what does it store? It stores what mouse button was pressed. And how does it how does it read which mouse button? It stores it like this. It stores left, or it stores right, or it stores center. For the mouse, for the you guys might not have a center mouse button. Some of you do have a center mouse button. Whatever, but that is how this all whole thing works. So if I say left, whenever I left click, it's gonna call this if loop function, and we're gonna say print ln, and I'm just gonna do a simple print statement like I did before. We're not gonna do anything extremely cool in this tutorial, but. I need to show you guys at least how to work these functions so you can use them in the future. The left, so we're just going to say the left mouse button was pressed. So there you have it. That's that one. And then as you guys can imagine, if I moved it down here and put else if and just change this to right then and I can change this to right and it'll change say with the right mouse button and the last thing we can do we don't need to put center guys we can just put else because you know why and I don't know why I put these curly braces here I kind of want you guys to get used to programming this way if 
you don't need to don't add them and I don't I'm just a habit of mine that I've had for a while so um, and then you just do print LN and you just say the center and that's all I'm gonna say um, so the reason I did else obviously if it's not left and it's right what else could it be it has to be the center right so there's no fourth mouse button there's only three so I don't need to specify that it's the center mouse button it's automatically going to know that so now when I call this function I can go ahead and now the left mouse button was pressed the right mouse button was pressed the center was pressed the, you know I can kinda just bounce around through this stuff and it will execute the correct appropriate line of code to do you know whatever I want it to do so that's kind of how mouse pressed works um, I really need to cover I'm gonna cover mouse pressed and I gotta get mouse released in here too because I can't you know I can't just cover this one we'll cover mouse dragged later because that's another method that we do need to cover but you know, I, I, I can only cover so much in a video. So void mouse released. What mouse released does is every time the mouse is released, it's called. So as you guys might know, okay, there's two events that occur when a mouse button is pushed. Okay? Well, there's one event that occurs when a mouse button is pushed, but I guess every mouse action has two events. The mouse being pressed and the mouse being released. So, you know, you're going to release the mouse button eventually. So when we release the mouse button, what do we want to do? I'm just going to, every time the a mouse the mouse is released, I'm just going to put a rectangle. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make it centered at 20, 20 or not centered, sorry. The left corner of it's going to be at 20, 20, and it's just going to be 20 by 20. Just a generic rectangle. And... Every time I release the mouse button, this method is going to get called here. So just to show you guys how this works, I hold down the left key. Okay, Obviously, I have, I'm holding it down right now. I have not released it yet. When I release it, this method should be called. So I'm going to release it now. And there's our rect, guys. So our rectangle got drawn up here. Now, unfortunately, if I did it again, it's not going to obviously do anything because it's just going to print the rect in the exact same location so it's just going to look like the screens maybe flashing or being refreshed or something if I clicked it really fast actually it doesn't even do that not uh, fast enough so that's how the mouse pressed and mouse release methods work uh, that's really all I have for you guys for this tutorial was just a simple explanation as to how these methods worked um, sorry we didn't get to do anything extremely interesting but I mean, this is stuff you guys kind of need to know for the future. Next time, we're probably gonna co cover the key typed and key key or key typed and key released, so you guys can understand that. And we'll cover the key variable, um, so that will show you guys how to take user feedback from the keyboard. And then after that, we're actually getting to a point where we can start moving into some more interesting codes. One final thing I need to note here. I would call this improper programming syntax. It's not really a good idea to call or to have instructions executed within these methods, mouse pressed and mouse released. Why guys? Here's the reason. Every set of instructions that your computer tries to complete takes up processing times or takes up time. So this takes some time to execute this takes some time to execute so if I had a 400 line code within mouse pressed it takes a ton of time to execute all of that stuff what happens then guys is everything within draw doesn't get executed until this stuff is done I don't this doesn't run on its own separate thread so since it doesn't run on its own separate thread when this gets interrupted this takes precedence over everything else. It's not going to listen to anything else going on in draw. So to kind of show you guys that, I'm going to, let's see here. Um, uh, nah, I guess we'll have to cover that in a, another video sometime. But just understand this. Don't do things like this. 
basically what you want to do in this is you want to go ahead and you want to in here put an if loop that says um, what we would do is we would do something like this we do boolean left or sorry l c and r and then all we would do in here is just say if left button gets pushed I'm not gonna type it all out guys it'd take a while then we just say l equals true okay if uh, else you know l equals false so all we're doing is making boolean assignments to simplify the amount of code then this set of instructions in here if we're just making a boolean assignment true or false these sets of instructions within mouse pressed and mouse released are instantaneous or not instantaneous it's not not zero time but it is so freaking fast that it can the code can go straight back to draw and continuously or, and continue to execute the set of instructions within draw so if that doesn't make sense to you guys I do apologize it probably didn't explain it the, as, as good as I really could have but in the future um, mouse pressed we will be making assignments to boolean values true or false we're not going to execute sets of instructions within there because that's improper programming syntax this wouldn't even be a good thing to do so what we would do is just say something with being the mouse being released you know then draw the rect or something like that so anyways guys that's all i have for you for this tutorial please subscribe to my channel please tell your friends please comment like do everything you can possibly do under the sun to try to promote my videos please i very much appreciate it and i will see you guys at your next processing tutorial